So thanks a lot for the introduction. I would like to uh, mention my co-workers. That's uh, Steffi Naumann from uh, Fraunhofer Institute in Germany, and that's Fernando Fan from uh, a Brazilian uh, university in Porto Alegre. He didn't make it into the abstract, by the way. And it's C uh, Christopher Allen from uh, Bonneville Power Administration. So this talk is about how to use uh, deterministic and also probabilistic forecasts in decision making for hydropower. Um, that's just uh, a framework. If you Google the uh, project name uh, given above, you, uh, you find some additional information about it. I will also mention a couple of papers to, to do some additional reading about what we do. So um, uh, we have two main sponsors for, for this work. That's Bonneville Power Administration in, uh, in the uh, Pacific Northwest. It's a Brazilian um, hydropower utility called CEMIC. And uh, uh, the people working on the research, that's the TARS in the Netherlands, that's a German research institute called Fraunhofer, and that's a Brazilian research institute, and we outsourced uh, some work to, uh, to Essen University in Germany. So as you can see, as the project started in October 2012, it uh, continues till April next year. So my results are to some extent uh, preliminary. Uh, but uh, let's see what we have. Um, the user concept is called model predictive control. It's an online optimization approach. So the whole terminology comes from uh, control engineers um, in water resources, you could also call it just like uh, an optimization approach, if you like. So what we do is we, uh, we predict the future system states and uh, um, over short term uh, forecast horizon, uh, for example, to predict uh, the water level in the reservoir. Uh, and that's done by an internal model, it's called. So that's an internal model that's running within an optimization procedure. Then we are. Uh, Um, then we use uh, an objective function or cost function to express the uh, control performance of, uh, of the operation of the reservoirs. And uh, this one gets minimized by an optimizer. And uh, this is done um, every time we get new information in. That's mainly about forecast information, new uh, numerical weather forecast coming in. We uh, generate a new stream flow forecast, an inflow into the reservoirs, and then uh, we do everything again and again. So that makes the control anticipatory, so we can, uh, we can look into the future and uh, react on what we see. Um, of course, this depends, and that's the main threat of this approach, it depends on the uh, forecast skill of the forecast. So if you have a bad forecast, you take a bad decision. That's uh, the uh, threat here, so you need to have good forecasts to uh, make use of it. Um, that's a bit different. Uh, compared to an offline approach where you uh, derive operating rules from a, a representative set of historical data. And this one is, is not using any forecast, this approach. Um, I don't want to go too much into details on the uh, methodology. Um, so the two equations above, that's uh, a process model. X is a state, um, system state such as a, a full bay elevation of a reservoir U stands for control input, that's a release of a reservoir, that's something you can decide on. And uh, D is a disturbance, that's uh, for example an inflow into the reservoir. So if, uh, if you get an inflow from an unregulated catchment, uh, you, don't, you don't have an influence on the inflow, of course. Um, so that's whatever water resources model, doesn't matter what kind of model this is, it's, uh, it can be linear or nonlinear, it doesn't, doesn't really matter here. So what we do, um, that's the equation uh, below. That's the cost function where we express uh, the uh, quality of the operation um, in mathematical terms. And uh, what you can see here is, uh, is an objective function or cost function. Uh, we have some hard constraints and we have a process model in, included in here. Um, that's a deterministic concept here, a deterministic optimization problem. So what we like to do is to extend it to a probabilistic setup. Um, that means a probabilistic inflow forecast and a stochastic optimization. And then it looks like, like this one here. So what we do is uh, that we assume a number of scenarios. And every scenario has a certain probability. 
it's, it's not equally, equal likelihood what we uh, take into account here. It's a scenario tree, and I come back to it a bit later what this means. So every branch of the, uh, every scenario can have a certain probability, and it adds up to, to one. In mathematical terms, uh, the M matrix uh, below um, um, defines the scenario tree, so this one is uh, scenario tree. Uh, there is scenario branch number one, this is uh, number two. Uh, you can see that uh, the indices indicate that uh, the first two time steps are the same in, in both uh, scenarios, and then it splits at, uh, at a branching point, and uh, you can have an individual um, uh, branch um, after the branching point. <coughs> So this also makes the uh, control uh, adaptive to, to new information coming in. So one, one first test case on a Brazilian reservoir, that's Tres Marias Reservoir in Brazil. That's in the south uh, east of Brazil in uh, Minas Gerais state. Uh, catchment area is about 55,000 square kilometers. So um, there's a paper, I will, I will mention the paper you can you can do some further reading if you're interested in, in this case. So this is uh, a multi-purpose reservoir. It's uh, used for hydropower, for drinking water supply, uh, for navigation, flood control, whatever. Um, these reservoirs are uh, primarily uh, operated by a national coordinator in Brazil. Uh, the control is, uh, is taken over by the operator, by SMIC, by the uh, local operator in case of floods. So what we focus on here is, uh, is uh, flood mitigation. So the first thing we did, we, uh, we looked into uh, a bunch of different uh, forecast products and mainly probabilistic products. That's uh, CPTEC, that's the Brazilian Met Office uh, forecast, that's uh, GFS, uh, the uh, ensemble GFS, and that's ECMWF, both the deterministic and probabilistic. And um, the upper figure is the mean absolute error, and you can see that uh, the uh, um, different products have a, have a relatively different performance here. So the best one is uh, ECMWF. That's uh, about the two green lines here. Uh, and you can compare it against the uh, light blue line, that's uh, the model performance itself, and the dark blue line that's uh, using a perfect rainfall forecast um, feeding uh, observed data into the uh, string flow forecasting model. So that's an inflow forecast into Tres Marias Reservoir. So I'm, I'm always asking if, if, if we have any Brazilians here, because the CPTEC forecast is, is pretty bad for, for this example. Um, it's, uh, it's overestimating the precipitation, and as you can see, it's, 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 it's not, a, not very good. Um, the uh, best one is ECMWF, that's the dark green line. And the lower one, that's mean. CRPS, I don't go into details. So uh, the lower one is, is, um, is considering the full ensemble. The upper one, the uh, mean absolute error, is just uh, um, doing analysis on the mean ensemble uh, forecast. Um, and the lower one is, is, is showing uh, even uh, um, a higher performance of the uh, probabilistic forecast here. Uh, another aspect here is that the uh, uh, probabilistic forecast has uh, five days of additional lead time compared to the light green one that's ECMWF of 10 days lead time. Now that's one aspect, that's the quality of the forecast, the skill of the forecast, another aspect here, and that's very important if you use uh, the forecast for decision making, so what I said before, if you, um, if, um, you take uh, decisions based on forecasts, one aspect here is if uh, the forecast is stable, and this performance indicator is called forecast convergence uh, score. And this one compares uh, uh, two uh, forecasts, like the one now you get in now, and the one you get in uh, uh, within 12 hours. And that's, of course, very important. So if the forecast is changing a lot, also your decision is changing a lot. So this indicator tells you how stable the forecast is, and a lower value indicates a stable forecast. And this also depends on lead time. So as you can see in the beginning, all forecasts are pretty much the same. Um, the uh, stream flow forecast is still uh, very much dependent on the uh, um, runoff in the model. But then it splits up, so the deterministic forecast is of course uh, um, the worst option you, you can do. 
and then uh, the other ones are getting better and better, and the best one is ECMWF here, that's the green line below the blue one, and uh, we also try to super ensemble, like putting all together, and that's the gray line, and this one is, is obviously uh, the best one here. So there are two conclusions right now. Um, uh, the probabilistic forecast is somehow better than the deterministic one in two aspects. So you have a, uh, a longer lead time of five days and you have a higher skill of the forecast itself. And another very important aspect is that it's more stable. So you also get more stable decisions out. Now that's an example for, of, uh, of one ensemble forecast that's ECMWF, both deterministic and probabilistic. You see the uh, spaghetti plot on the left and on the right, it's already converted into a scenario tree of, uh, of uh, 32 branches. That's a binary tree. Um, that's just one, one way to generate it. We are right now exploring what, uh, what way is uh, performing best. <coughs> Uh, the, black, uh, the black one is the uh, uh, observed inflow data, and that's, uh, that's back computed data. That's why it's very noisy here. Um, so we did a Heinkast experiment over five years, uh, trying out different uh, setups. So one uh, that's about blue dots is uh, the performance of a perfect forecast. And what we are looking at is, uh, is a peak flow in, in a downstream, uh, at a downstream gauge. And everything above 2,000 is causing um, um, some damage. Everything above 4,000 is, is causing uh, large-scale inundation in a city downstream. So we, we want to be below 4,000 in any, any case, but we would like to be as, as, uh, um, as close to 2,000 as possible. So blue would mean a perfect inflow forecast. So we just use observed inflow data here. And as you can see, for a lead time of 30 days, we, we can avoid any flow above uh, 2,000. That's, of course, not realistic because um, we don't have a perfect inflow forecast over 30 days. So um, what you can see, um, uh, the red dots indicate the ECMWF, the deterministic forecast, and the uh, um, cross indicates the uh, uh, optimization based on an ensemble mean. And that's, that's pretty much uh, the benefit you can get by replacing the uh, uh, deterministic uh, setup by, uh, by a probabilistic forecast. So that's about uh, peak flow reduction of 500 cubic meters per second. Now that's, that's a more complex system here. That's uh, uh, Bonneville Power Administration. That's a big 10 system in the Pacific Northwest. And this one is much more sophisticated. Um, we have a look at the federal reservoirs. That's everything indicated as, as green triangles here. And uh, there are a lot of objective on, and constraints to, to operate the system. And uh, what, what we will look at is, is first of all, is a comparison of, uh, of different uncertainties here. Um, so what you see in the figures here is a comparison between uh, load uncertainty in the uh, um, electrical network and the uh, Meteorological uncertainty, both in megawatt uh, in megawatts, for um, five days lead time and for 15 days lead, uh, 15 days lead time. Uh, as you can see, the uh, um, uh, meteorological. I hope you can see it. It's uh, it's a green line, so it's not very easy to distinguish here. Um, <coughs> the uh, meteorological uncertainty is dominating the uh, uncertainty uh, in in the first half of the year, um, and. Uh, it's going to uh, pretty much zero in the uh, remaining year. Um, in, uh, in this remaining uh, period, the uh, load uncertainty is, is dominating, but on a, on a relatively small uh, level. Um, so it, it, it makes sense to look in particular into the meteorological uncertainty here, but we, uh, we take into account both uh, in this optimization model. And uh, that's about our first results we got. Um, so what we do is we, we try to translate the inflow uncertainty into, uh, into uncertainty in model states and model outputs. That means we, uh, we get an uncertainty in as, as, uh, as an inflow uncertainty, and uh, we use the stochastic optimization to get out uh, the variability in, uh, in model states, such as FOB elevations and, uh, and uh, a power generation of the, of, of, of the hydropower projects. 
Um, the next step, and that's, uh, that's ongoing right now, um, what you can see here is the variability in the uh, FUB elevation at one of the reservoirs. So if you, if you need to generate additional energy or less energy, um, you need to use more or less water. And this water needs to come from uh, one of the reservoirs. So that's Grand Coulee uh, in this example. And you can see the variability in Grand Coulee. So this variability is, is a direct result of the uh, variability in the inflows. Um, to some extent, that's not accepted. So they want to, uh, to keep uh, Grand Coulee on a certain uh, target elevation. And now the uh, solution is to, uh, to get some additional flexibility from somewhere else, and that's the energy market. So what they do is they shrink the variability in the hydro system and somehow outsource it into the uh, energy market. So that means uh, the, uh, they buy and sell energy to, uh, to, to keep the uh, um, hydro system on a tighter uh, range. So that's the work we are doing right now. So we uh, integrate hydropower generation and marketing, that means energy trading. Uh, that's another optimization uh, model we couple to the uh, hydropower uh, generation model. And uh, uh, we make strategic use of the operational flexibility by approaching the energy market. And uh, that's also a very important aspect here is uh, we, we try to become a bit interactive. So for BPA, it's not like running an optimization and you are done. It's more like interacting with the um, optimization model to, to, to work on a good solution. And, and you can go different directions here. So it's very important to, to become interactive with the decision makers. And uh, a last one is if there's operational flexibility left, so you, you try to use it, uh, and that's, uh, that's mainly used to create ed added benefit from the system, so to, to uh, uh, to create extra revenues, so to buy and sell energy with the remaining operational flexibility to make more money. So my conclusions here. Um, so we, we have an added value of uh, probabilistic forecasts in, uh, in, in such decision-making approaches. Um, so the probabilistic forecast has a higher skill in the examples we looked at, and we have a, a longer lead time, so that's another aspect. <laughs> And uh, another very important one is that we, are, uh, we get uh, a more stable decision on what we do because of a more stable probabilistic forecast. Now, uh, the last bullet is about uh, uh, the decision-making uh, process. Uh, so what the stochastic optimization approach is doing, it's somehow propagating the uh, forecast uncertainty in the inflow through the uh, system and through the decision-making process. And you can, you can use the optimization by, uh, by uh, defining uh, objectives and constraints to shape the uncertainty into, into a certain uh, direction. So you can put it into the hydro system, you can put it into the energy market, depending on what's most beneficial for you. Um, yeah, that's it, thanks a lot. So I, I put a uh, number of publications here um, the first one is already out. That's about the uh, deterministic uh, uh, model for BPA. The other two are about the framework we use, and the last one is about the uh, Brazilian case. So thanks a lot. Thanks, Dirk. <clears throat> Very interesting, especially the part about the stability of the forecast being important, I think. Um, in the interest of time, I think we need to move to our next speaker. Um, but please ask Dirk questions offline. Thanks. Sorry about that. That's really good stuff.